Good afternoon, geometry students. I hope you are doing fantastic. Um, we are starting chapter 11. It's kind of a long chapter because it's taking two chapters from the book. Well, what used to be chapters 11 and 12, they just put into one huge chapter 11. So we've got several sections as well as an 11.0. So we have 11.0 and then 11.1 through 11.8. So essentially we are gonna be working on all of chapter 11 from right after spring break up until finals. So the first section, 11.0, is a little bit weird because you know there is not technically an 11.0 in the book. But the reason we're doing this lesson is because they're assuming that you know all this information and many of you have not learned it or may not remember it. So we're gonna do a little bit of review of things that you may have learned in the past just to make sure that you have that information. So today we're gonna be looking at the area of parallelograms, triangles, and trapezoids. So we're going to do uh, we're going to do the three formulas as well as examples for each. So let's go ahead and look at what would happen with a parallelogram. With a parallelogram, the formula for area is base times height. So I'm going to do example number one here, showing what we mean by base times height. So we've got our parallelogram. The height is always the uh, distance between the two bases in a straight up and down line. It's going to be perpendicular to the bases. So this would be our height. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and mark the sides off here. 32, 20, 20, and then let's call this distance 12. Okay. So um, in order to find the height of this um, shape, what we would need to do is use Pythagorean theorem. Notice that you can take this triangle right here, coloring it in, and see that you do have a right triangle and we have one missing side. So we're gonna do h squared plus 12 squared equals 20 squared or h squared plus 144 equals 400. When I subtract 400 and 144 from both sides, I get 256 for h squared. And then when I take the square root, I get 16. Now, some of you may have seen a shortcut here. This was actually a three, four, five triangle times what do you think? It was a three, four, five times four. So we had three times four, four times four, and five times four. So that would be a shortcut that if you wanted to for that one. So if area is base times height, this entire base of the parallelogram is 32, right? But then the height would be 16. So the base times the height would be 512 inches squared. If we want to find the perimeter of this shape, which we often do, we would add up two of the 20s and two of the 32s. So we would have 40 plus 64, and we would get a perimeter of 104 inches. Okay, so the area is an in inches squared, and then the perimeter is just in inches. So we're gonna have a variety of problems like this on our homework. I did wanna do another example using the formula that we have here of area is equal to base times height. I wanna do example number two with a different parallelogram because there are lots of different possibilities here for what we can do. On this parallelogram, I'm gonna have this side here be 12. Um, and then I'm going to have, um, let's see, this length here be 16. And then I'm going to have a 45 degree angle right here. And of course, we need to know the height. Now, this problem is also a little bit of tricky. The key here is to notice that if this side is 12, the one opposite of it must also be 12. It's also important to notice that this figure is not drawn to scale. It looks like a 30, 60, 90, but really it's a 45, 45, 90. 
and that often does happen in math class in textbooks and worksheets. Now that will not be the case on your SAT exam because the questions on your SAT exam are required to be to scale. But I do need to be able to find the height here. Now notice if I want to draw a more accurately drawn triangle. If I have a 45, 45, 90, this height is gonna be the same. Both of these legs are gonna be that same measure. I do know I have to take the height times radical two to get 12. And then to simplify, I would divide both sides by radical two. Then I can cross this out. Then I would rationalize my denominator by multiplying top and bottom times radical two. So this would become 12 radical two over two or just six radical two. So my height is going to be six radical two. So that is a review of something back from chapter nine. So given that information then, let's go ahead and find the area. Area of a parallelogram is base times height. Our base is 16 and our height here is six radical two. When I take 16 times six, I get 96. So we can think of this as 96 radical two if we want, or about 135.8 centimeters squared. Perimeter would just be adding up the four sides. So 12 plus 12 plus 16 plus 16 and that would give me 56 centimeters. So the formula for area of a parallelogram is fairly straightforward, just base times height. Sometimes when you're doing the calculations to find the base and the height, there's a little bit of work involved. So that was the first uh, shape that we're looking at, parallelograms. We're also gonna look at finding the areas of triangles. Now we have been talking about this throughout the school year as well, but this is just a good opportunity to review. Um, example three is similar to one on your homework. It's kind of a word problem and I'm gonna read it out loud. You can just draw the picture if you'd like. You don't have to worry about copying down all the words. It says the height of a triangle is seven inches more than its base. The area of the triangle is 60 square inches. Find the base and the height. So for example three, I'm going to draw a picture and it doesn't have to be to scale. I just want something I can label. And I'm going to label the base as being B. Now the first part of the problem said the height of a triangle is seven inches more than its base. So if the base is B, what would the height be then do you think? The height would be B plus seven. Now we need to know that the area is 60. So let's write this down. I know the formula for a triangle is one half base times height. I also know the area is 60 and I've got base and height of B and B plus seven. Now to do this problem, we're going to do something called factoring, which many of you have not done before, but we will occasionally do this year and you will do quite a bit of next year. So let's take a look at what happens here. What I typically recommend is multiplying both sides of this equation by two, just to get rid of that fraction. Because when I do that, two times a half becomes one. So now I have 120 is B times B plus seven. I do need to distribute here. So that becomes 120 equals B squared plus seven B. Now this is very different than most equations you have solved in the past because it has a B squared and a B in it. When we encounter that kind of situation, the easiest way to solve is using something called factoring. And to do that, we need to set everything equal to zero. So I'm gonna subtract 120 and my problem now becomes B squared plus seven B minus 120 equals zero. Now, the way that we do this problem is we write all the factors of 120 on one column 
and we write their sums on the other. So we need to do a little factor tree for 120. I know that 120 can be one times 120. Two goes in 60 times, so I can write it as two times 60. Again, we're using this number right here. Now three also goes into, to, into 60, and we'll look at that in a minute. Let me just break down the rest of the tree here. Two goes in 15 times, and then three goes in five. So these are all the numbers that we multiply together to make 120. I already used two. If I use this three here, then I would have two times two is four, times two is eight, times five is 40. 120 is also three times 40. Or I could group the two twos. Two times two is four times 15 times two would be 30. That works. Notice that five also goes into 120. That would be five here. And then the rest of the numbers, if I multiply all of those, I would have 24. Six also goes into 120. You can see here with the three times two and then five times four would be 20. So this is uh, six times 20. Notice that seven does not go into 120, but eight does, two times two times two. So that would be eight times 15. And nine is not there, uh, 10 is. So 10 times 12 would also work. So those are all the different ways that we can multiply to make 120. Now. I need the two numbers that I end up picking to multiply to make negative 120, which means that one of them is positive and one is negative, and I need their sum to be seven. If two numbers are multiplied together and one of them is positive and one is negative, my answer is gonna have the sign of the bigger number. Since I want my answer, my sum to be positive seven, I want the bigger number to be positive and the smaller number to be negative. So I'm gonna put negative signs in front of the smaller number. Now I'm gonna add these two numbers here. Negative one plus 120 is 119, or you can think of that as 120 minus one. 60 minus two is 58. 40 minus three is 37. 30 minus four is 26. 24 minus five is 19. 20 minus six is 14. 15 minus eight is seven, and 12 minus 10 is two. So can anybody tell, looking at that chart there, what pair of numbers I need to use? The pair of numbers I need to use is this pair right here, because I was looking for two numbers that multiplied to make negative 120 and added to make seven. Those are the two numbers. So now I can rewrite my problem using those numbers. I put these first and then the two numbers go second. So I have the minus eight here and the positive 15 there. Now we're almost done. When you solve a problem with factoring, your first step is to set the equation equal to zero. Let's write that down. Set equation equal to zero. We did that. The second set is to factor using that chart, and we just did that. We factored by rewriting the problem as multiplication. The third step is to set each factor equal to zero and solve. So I'm gonna set B minus A equal to zero and B plus 15 equal to zero. When I solve, I would add eight to both sides here and get B is eight. I would subtract 15 here and get B is negative 15. Now notice that B stands for the base of a triangle. The base of a triangle has to be positive. It can't be a negative number. So I know that my B is eight and then B plus seven would be 15. Um, so we have now used what we know about the area of a triangle to find the missing base and height. That was a super difficult problem. You will not be actually tested on this in this class, but you will need to know how to do this next year. 
And um, so I thought that I would explain a little bit of this now so that you have that knowledge. Okay, the last um, area formula that I wanted to go over with you guys today was the area formula for a trapezoid. So we've talked about the area of a parallelogram. We've talked about the area for a triangle. Now we're gonna look at the area for a trapezoid. So the formula for the area of a trapezoid is one half the height times the sum of the two bases. That means the two bases added together. So let's do example number four. I'm gonna put this trapezoid kind of on its side just to show you that it doesn't have to be laying flat. And then let's go ahead and label this information here. There's gonna be a five there, a 15 here, and an eight there. Now, when we say height, we mean the distance between the two bases. So the height in this problem is that five. It is the distance between the two bases. The two bases are the two sides that are parallel to each other. And in that case, this case, it would be the sides marked with eight and 15. So let's fill in everything that we need. We want one half the height. Well, the height is five. And then we want the two bases added together. So that would be eight plus 15. So that's half of five times 23. Now, when you do the multiplication here, you can either take half of five and get 2.5 and multiply that times 23. Or if you want, you can take five times 23 and then divide by two. You're gonna get the same answer either way. It's going to be 57.5 inches squared. All right, guys, I hope that you got all that down and I look forward to helping you in class. Thanks.